You know you're not supposed to be up there. Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for this video, we have a topic quite beaten up across the internet, which is RAM frequency regarding integrated graphics performance. And even though it is so beaten and we already know that higher RAM frequencies do increase the performance of the integrated graphics of the integrated GPUs, like on the APUs, for example, the 5600G, etc., like this one, the 8700G, well, I searched across the... It's like Linus is with me in spirit. Gladly the box is, is well built and yeah, it got no damage. <laughs> but yeah, what I meant is that I was searching for benchmarks of the 8700G online regarding the RAM frequency and I found none. There are lots of news and articles talking about how some reviewer actually managed managed to reach 8000 or 9000 megahertz or how they improved the performance by 30%, but real world data tested in games and well presented none. And like today's sponsor that has everything you need. Today's video sponsor is GVG More. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. But yeah, that's why I wanted to make this video, because I wanted to show you exactly what you can get from the Radeon 780M inside the Ryzen 7 8700G when you're tweaking frequency and timings. As for the testing methodology, all configurations are using the same exact RAM kit. And by the way, I want to thank Vcolor for being awesome and sending me this awesome kit, 2 times 24 gigabytes, so a kit of 48 gigabytes, 8000 megahertz, CL38, which is basically the Manta Xfinity RGB, and it is really, really awesome, as it says, high performance DDR5. It just performs and looks great. And by the way, you can check these ones on the Vcolor's website with link in the description. So we're using that same Vcolor kit for all configurations testing scaling only, meaning that all tests were done using the same exact timings and sub-timings that were manually selected by me on BIOS to know the exact difference that frequency alone makes. And then we have two different runs made with tweaked timings. So more real world timings with 6400 MHz, CL36, I believe, no, CL30, 6400 MHz, CL30, and 8000 MHz CL38 as well, but with improved sub-timings too. And these two will present the real-world scenarios that you can get, for example, by tweaking your kit, something that you can easily do by following this video passing right now on the screen. The video that if you follow, you'll understand that tweaking Hynix DDR5 kits, according to Buildzoid Guide, is way easier than you think. And sorry for the long intro, but I really wanted to explain how things will work. So, let's see what we got. Starting with Assassin's Creed Mirage, in terms of pure frequency scaling, we get a 21% uplift going from 6000 to 8000 MHz, which is not that much if you ask me. Although it is interesting to note that when going from 6400 to 7200 MHz, the difference isn't that great even though we're increasing the frequency, or mega transfers per second if you want to, by 800. And even with that massive uplift, we see a mere difference of 6%. And that happens because it is usually after the 6400 MHz that you need to decouple the UCLK from the memory clock, making the UCLK half of the memory clock instead of being equal. Although in real-world scenarios we can get a cheap 6400 MHz kit with Hynix dies and tweak it easily to the point where it is faster than the 8000 MHz kit using XEMP only, in this case by 7% with a tweak of 8000 MHz being of course 15% faster than the stock XMP1. In Cyberpunk 2077 things are more or less the same, with the scaling frequency-wise from 6000 to 8000 being 16%, with the tweak timing still being more important as even the 6400 MHz configuration is once again faster than the XMP 8000 MHz one. And if we go to the loose timing 6400 MHz configuration to the tweaked timings one, we get an uplift of 18%, showing us once again that not only the memory frequency matters in terms of iGPU performance, but also the memory timings that alongside the frequency will define the latency. 
God of War is a title that simply loves bandwidth and that can be seen even in the scaling scenario, where the highest frequency is now 24% faster than the slowest one and gets really close to the 6400 MHz configuration with tweaked timings. And what surprises me is the difference from 6400 MHz tweaked to 8000 MHz tweaked, that is also much bigger now being 12%, which is nothing astonishing of course, but definitely interesting to see. And Forza Horizon 5 isn't as bandwidth dependent as God of War, but we still get some interesting results. Going to the scaling part once more, you can see that raising frequency 800 MHz from 6400 to 7200 only delivers 6% more performance. And once again, that's because after 6400 MHz we need to decouple the memory clock from the UCLK, losing a bit of performance with it. Still, we got some pretty good results here, I must say. Spider-Man is a game that loves memory bandwidth and timings, and we can see that immediately as going from 6000 to 8000 MHz with the same exact timings delivers a 21% performance uplift. And even testing the best tweaked coupled settings versus the best tweaked decoupled settings, 6400 versus 8000, the difference is still there, with the 8000 MHz still delivering much better 1% lows, not only improving the average FPS, but also gameplay smoothness. Lies of P is also a game that runs pretty well in lower end systems, as can be seen, and I must tell you that these results really surprise me. This game prioritizes the frequency a lot more than the others, with the 7200 MHz configuration delivering 5 FPS more than the 6400 MHz one, even with the coupled memory clock. Well, it doesn't really show results far away from what we've seen before in previous titles, which is a good thing if you ask me. With Starfield we seem to have some mod scenarios, for example going from 6400 to 7200 MHz delivered a decent performance uplift, but after that even increasing the memory by 800 MHz with the same exact timings only delivered 1.5 FPS, which is basically nothing. Although as we tweak the timings we get a bit more juice out of it, with 6400 MHz tweaked being 19% faster than the loose timings configuration. In this game, we can still achieve almost 50 average FPS in heavy parts like New Atlantis, which in my opinion is an astonishing result for this APU. Now starting with esports titles, we have Rocket League. And this APU can run this game without a single issue, but damn, in terms of scaling alone we got 31% performance uplift going from 6000 to 8000 with the same exact timings and subtimings, which is outstanding. I mean, even the tweak timings with 8000 MHz is 20% faster than the 8000 MHz XMP1, in this specific scenario of course, which makes the game much more enjoyable. Outstanding results here, even at maximum settings. Dota 2 is another title that surprised me, with gains being also quite big. Interestingly enough, the difference from 6000 to 8000 MHz with the same timings was exactly the same as with Rocket League. 31%. And even if, if we get a cheap 6400 MHz kit and tweak it, we can still get 9% better performance than an 8000 MHz kit using XMP, that also costs much more, which is like great news for 100% of people using these APUs. PUBG is also a nice example of scaling, with all frequencies scaling very well in between each other, although we can see that the difference going from 6000 to 6400 MHz was actually bigger than going from 7600 to 8000 MHz, even if both present a 400 MHz difference. But yeah, I know that percentage-wise the difference is smaller. With a tweaked 6400 MHz configuration, we can still achieve almost 100 FPS, which is a very good number for an integrated GPU. This means that you can die smoother. <laughs> Counter-Strike 2 is a game that couldn't be missing, as most people getting these APUs are definitely using them to play games like this one, Valorant, League of Legends and so on. In this case the results are quite nice once again, with even the slowest configuration achieving an average of 118 FPS, which is quite outstanding, but as soon as we go to the real world configuration, the results get even better, sorry, with a 6400 MHz tweaked configuration delivering around 150 average FPS, which is already a very playable result, as even the 1% lows wouldn't drop below 112, which is actually the Portuguese 911 number. 
and with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the results are, well, not bad. I mean, the normal Expo 6000 MHz kit should be around a 7200 MHz CL38 performance. I actually should have tested this, but I already have the 7800X 3D on that computer, and I'm doing some tests there, so I guess this is it for now. Still, we can have over 60 average FPS in this game at balanced settings, without upscaling with an integrated graphics, which is a win-win situation. Unless you die and go to Gulag, then you're f League of Legends is one of the, if not the most played game worldwide, so it was a must to test specially on integrated graphics. Even at maximum settings, my fridge was able to run this game at 69 FPS. As for this APU, it can run it at over 200 FPS 99% of time. Even the lowest and unrealistic 6000 MHz CL38 would give you almost 200 average FPS, and the tweaked real-world configurations didn't deliver more FPS since, well, we were running into a CPU bottleneck at this point. As in games that don't really use that many cores, the 8700G is quite slower than the Ryzen 5 7600X. And the last game benchmarked is Fortnite, using the X12, low settings and TSCR set to quality mode. We can see here that the game scales almost the same way all the other ones did, and quite linearly as well. The normal 6000 MHz CL36 Expo configuration should be running around the same as the lose timing 7200 MHz one, which delivers around 90 average FPS in this specific title, which to me is impressive. And if you want to go further and improve the FPS numbers, you can just grab a cheap 6400 MHz Hynix kit and tweak it, thing that will deliver you a 10% performance uplift. Although in this title most people wouldn't even need to worry as the differences are not that relevant in my opinion. And to finalize the benchmarks we have the 14 games average results, or as some fanboys perceive it, the reality breaker. In terms of scaling only, we can see that going from 6000 to 8000 MHz with the same exact timings delivered a 22.4% performance uplift. But this is only for scaling purposes, as in real life no one will have such loose timings with any kit running lower than 7200 MHz. But if we, if we look at the 8000 MHz XCMP results, the 6400 MHz tweaked configuration is still 6% faster, meaning that you can simply grab a cheaper kit, tweak it, and you'll get better performance than when using a much higher RAM frequency with XMP enabled, and even the gains that you generally get from 6400 to 8000 MHz tweaked aren't generally worth it considering the price difference of both kits. But well, this is just my opinion, of course. And well, guys, you saw the results, and let me tell you that, once again, this kit from Vicolor is amazing, but at the same time is very expensive. And as you saw, in terms of scaling only, going from 6000 to 8000, well, we got around 25% performance uplift, depending on the game, but around that 25% overall, because in some scenarios we had like 18, 19%, in some other scenarios we had like 31%, like Rocket League, going from 6000 to 8000 with the same exact timings. But once again, timings alone don't make the latency at all, and although the frequency is important, the timings are very important as well. So grabbing this kit and reducing the frequency to 6400 MHz and then tightening the timings and the doing the same for 8000 MHz, tightening the sub timings makes a lot of difference. And as you can see, even the 6400 MHz with tweaked timings and sub timings is faster in every single scenario than 8000 MHz XMP. Basically, you grab this kit, you grab this kit, you put it there on the motherboard and you select XMP. You go select XMP, 8000 MHz, uh, tweak the voltage and maybe the sock voltage and it will work out of the box. This is how most people would use this kit, okay? But if you know how to tweak your things, you can actually get a way cheaper kit, way cheaper like 149, for example, the Vicolor website has one of those as well, 149, 6400 MHz, you can just tweak the timings on that way cheaper kit and get more performance than the XMP that you would have with this kit of 8000 MHz CL38, kit that would cost you like $399, <laughs> yeah.
So overall, being in terms of CPU performance or integrated graphics performance, like this one with the Radeon 780M, well, frequency alone doesn't really matter. You need the frequency, but at the same time, you are way, way better tweaking your timings and sub-timings. And like I told you, most of the R5 kits nowadays are Hynix, and, uh, and for the Hynix kits, you can just follow the tutorial in this video that also shows a tutorial by Buildzoid, showing you that the timings do make a lot of difference. In this video, you can see, for example, differences in between CPU performance. You can see that it not only matters in terms of CPU performance, but also in terms of integration graphics performance and yeah let me just so conclusion of the final thoughts yeah I if I were you I just wouldn't bother for a single second I would get a 6000 or maybe 6400 megahertz kit which once again are way cheaper than the than the higher tier kits and just tweak the timings and sub timings and get a way way better experience compared to the XMP or even the Expo in some other kits as well so yeah, for me, it's a no brainer. You get a cheaper kit, you tweak it and the performance that you have with integrated graphics or CPU performance will get much better. It's a win win situation. Lower price, better performance. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video. Once again, I, I really thank you for watching. Share this video if this video helped you in some way and I guess see you in the next one, which will most likely be the review of the, of the adrenaline. 24.3.1 drivers and after that and after that sorry i'm kind of stuttering 40 games with the rtx 4080 super at 4k then we'll have 40 games at 1440p and i will also do a benchmark of the 7900 xtx versus the rtx 4080 super one versus another and after that we'll have the, um, the 7800 xt or most likely yes 7800 xt versus 7900 gre versus 4070 super as well those videos will come for sure so stay tuned thank you very much once again and see you in the next video guys cheers